Hello and welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today we are so excited to be introducing our darling daffodils dyes. These dyes are so pretty, so let's go ahead and check them out. Here is a look at all of the different dyes in this set, and they help you create all different versions of daffodils, and we'll be showing you how to do that today in this video. So this set has cute little petals in different orientations. We have the triple petal and then the single petals. We have some flower centers, flower stems, and some greenery. We have a base for a little flower bud and some more little center details. So let's start creating the main daffodil. We've cut two of the triple piece and we're gonna layer those two together, just like that, kind of like in a little star pattern. Then we're gonna layer the other little flower centers. You can either do one or two like we've done here. And then we're gonna add this little flower center on top of that. So it just looks adorable. Once again, you can layer just one, two, three, or all four, and then add them to the center of the daffodil. Then this is the stem for the flower. There's a little piece at the top to put your adhesive on, and then you could just adhere your flower right on top, and now you have the flower on a stem. And then you can add these beautiful individual leaves, so you could add just one, or you could add a whole bunch of them. Next up, we're gonna work on creating almost like a little flower bud, or the daffodils in the process of growing. So we're gonna take these individual petals, and we're gonna layer three of them together, just like this. Then we're gonna take that little green triangular piece and we're gonna put that at the bottom. Then all you need to do is add some adhesive on the top of that stem and then you can layer that right on there. And you'll see that we have the stem going in the two different directions so that you can create a really dynamic scene on a card or a scrapbook layout or any kind of fun decoration. The next style of daffodil we're gonna do is seeing a daffodil from a different angle. So we're gonna add some adhesive on those three petals and then we have that flower center, the other style. We're gonna start with the petal in the center and then we're gonna add the other petals on the outside. And you'll see it's almost as if you looked at that main flower, but just from the other side. I mean, it's just such a pretty look. And then we can add that onto the stem too. So it's just a different style of flower that you can add to your projects to get lots of different kind of dynamic looks. And these all just look amazing together. You could layer all three together, or you could use one on their own, or you could make a bunch of one style and layer them all over your card. And then here is a little close up of what these flowers look like. I love the stitching detail so much and those little cut lines and pierced lines on all of those different little elements that you can layer onto the flower is what makes them feel so special. You can cut them out of plain colored cardstock, out of pattern paper, you could ink them, you could color them with markers, you could have so much fun. There's even other ways to use these little flowers and petals and we're gonna be showing an alternate way to use these at the end of the video. But first up, we are gonna be recreating a card by Megan that was so cute and she put her daffodils in the how you bean jar and I just love this look. So we're gonna stamp the how you bean jar in some mermaid ink and this is a really fun way to stamp this jar because it makes it feel like it's one of those clear ball jars you know those mason jars so cute so fun. So we're gonna die cut that with the original coordinating die for how you bean and then we're gonna be doing something a little bit unique. The How You Bean stamp set has a shaker add-on that helps you create a shaker, but we're gonna use that shaker die in a little bit of a different way. We're just gonna use it to cut out the center of the jar. So here you'll see is the original coordinating die, and then this is the shaker die that you would normally use to create a shaker frame. We're actually just gonna use it to cut out the center of the jar. And that's because we're gonna be layering some vellum behind this jar. So we're gonna show you how that works in just a second. But here you can see, we ran it through the die cut machine. And now we have this really cool kind of like jar frame that's gonna be a perfect fit for the card. Then we're gonna use that same coordinating die that we cut the jar with to cut a piece of vellum. And that vellum is gonna go behind the jar and once again, it's gonna give it that glass feel. So we'll add some adhesive all along the back of the jar and then we can layer that piece of vellum there. And I love this look, it really just looks so realistic. And once we add the flowers to the jar, oh my gosh, you're just gonna love it. So now we're gonna work on creating some daffodils for that cute jar. So we're gonna be using a combination of white cardstock, uh, some colored cardstock with our sticky note cardstock there, and then also some pattern paper. And the four leaf clover pattern paper is such a pretty color for the stems and leaves of the daffodil. It just looks stunning. 
So now we'll start layering the daffodils just like we did earlier on in the video. We can take the trio of petals and we'll layer those kind of like a little star. And then we're gonna layer that cute little flower center together. And we've added some green in the middle of the flower center, which I think looks so pretty. And then we're gonna use a white gel pen to add little dots to the ends of the flowers. This is so easy to do and it looks adorable. It just adds this beautiful dainty detail to each of those little die cut pieces. Then we can take that flower center and add it to the middle of the daffodil, which looks just so pretty. Then next up, we're gonna work on one of those kind of side facing daffodils. So we're gonna add our trio of flowers together, just like this. And then we're gonna take that other little flower center and add that just like that. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty and so cute. And then we're gonna go ahead with our white gel pen and add those tiny little dots kind of everywhere where there's a scallop. And there's something about it that just feels so special. I love how it looks. We're also gonna add some little white lines there on the outside of that little flower center. And then we can add these both to their stems and then we're going to add some of those leaves on the stems and when you add the leaves it's when it really makes the whole thing come together and I just love how pretty it looks out of that pattern paper it just has a little bit of texture now we're going to start working on our card base so we have some peacock cardstock that's five and a half by four and a quarter we're going to die cut a white stitch rectangle that's going to layer over top of that and then we're also going to be die cutting some spiffy speckles paper, uh, which is such a pretty color and it has a little texture which will make our background feel special. And we're gonna layer all of these together. So this white one is the largest of the outside in stitch rectangles, giving us a thin little border of that peacock cardstock. And then we can layer that spiffy speckles on there and that's the largest of the small stitch rectangles. And that gives us this fun little kind of like triple border that I think is so pretty. Now using that same die, the largest of the small stitch rectangles, we're gonna cut that speckled egg cardstock, which is this pretty kind of like very light beige and it's gonna be a really nice floor for our flowers. But to see how high up we need the floor, we're gonna kind of start to play around with this card and see what it's gonna look like. And you can see how cool that vellum is with the flowers in the jar. I just love how it looks. And now we can kind of see what's gonna look nice. Just make a little tick mark with your pencil and then just trim that piece off there. And now we're gonna have this ground for our whole scene to go on but we wanted to add a little bit of color to this ground. So we're gonna take some dough ink here and just add a little bit of that ink all around. And just by adding a little bit of shading, it gives it just a really pretty look and it's gonna make it feel a little bit more like it might be like a wooden tabletop. Now, before we start to assemble the card, we're gonna work on the sentiment. And I love how Megan did this. She used the Happy, Happy, Happy stamp set, which is the best all occasion stamp set. And it's got a Happy Mother's Day in there. So we're actually gonna trim our stamp apart and then we're gonna stack those together just like that. And you can trim your stamps apart and then you can put them right back together so that you could have them stacked or in a straight line. But we're gonna do it this way and we're gonna be doing some heat embossing with some white embossing powder. So we're gonna use an anti static prep tool on there and we're gonna stamp in some clear sticky ink right onto the vellum of the jar. Then we can sprinkle on some white heat embossing powder. We'll heat it up with our heat tool and we'll have a nice bright white shiny sentiment onto that vellum which is such a unique look. So now we need the happy part of the Happy Mother's Day. So we're gonna take another little scrap piece of vellum here and we're gonna use one of the happies from this set. So there are three happies in that stamp set and you can even die cut them and that's what we're gonna be doing. So we're gonna stamp out this really pretty loopy one. Once again, in that same clear embossing ink, we'll sprinkle on our white heat embossing powder and we'll heat it up with the heat tool and we're gonna have that same nice bright white shiny sentiment on the vellum. Then we can take the coordinating die and we can die cut this phrase. Now, before we add that little scripty happy there onto the jar, we need to do a little bit more decoration. So here is some sparkle glaze. We're gonna add that to the jar and then just take your finger and pounce it. And that's gonna give it this really pretty shiny look, but without having kind of like the line of glitter. Sometimes I like the line of glitter and sometimes I just want just a little smattering of glitter and that's a perfect way to do it. Then here we have some lawn trimmings in the natural color and we are going to kind of fake as if we had tied a bow around the jar. And this is my favorite way, it's Rebecca's as well, to be able to tie a bow. I am really not good at tying bows, so if I fake it, then it'll look nicer. So what we're gonna do is add some glue dots to the back of the jar, and then we're gonna wrap that piece of twine there around the jar, and the glue dots are gonna hold them in place, and then we'll just trim off any excess. And then we can tie a bow separately, and then we can layer the bow onto that string. And that's gonna help the bow stay just a little bit better and not make it so finicky trying to tie something around a piece of cardstock. 
So we'll add a glue dot to the back of the bow and then layer that right on the string and it looks as if we tied it even though we didn't. Then we can add a little bit of adhesive to the back of that happy and then layer that onto the jar now that we have our twine and glitter on there. And then we can start assembling, which is my favorite for this card because I really love seeing the whole thing come together. So we're gonna have, add that ground that we did earlier. Then we'll layer our flowers. So we're gonna add some tape runner to the back of these and layer them on to the card. And they just look so pretty together. Ah, oh, I just love it so much. And then we can add the jar and we're just gonna add some adhesive right around the edges of the jar so that it doesn't show through the vellum too much. And then once you layer that over those stems, it looks as if the flowers are inside the jar. And I think that is just so cute. Now that we see the whole card starting to form, we're gonna add a little bit more greenery. So this is one of the stems from the Darling Daffodils. We're gonna add that there. And then we're gonna get creative and take a look at some other new die sets to bring in some more greenery towards the bottom of this card. So this is the Secret Garden Window Die, which is such a fun and pretty die. And it has these extra little greenery pieces on the inside. And it also has this cool little frame that has greenery as well. So we're gonna die cut that same watercolor wishes paper and we're going to be using a bunch of the greenery from this frame so we're actually going to be trimming out some of those and then we'll be using some of the other ones that we die cut now as we started to add these to the card they just didn't seem dark enough they kind of matched the top flowers a little bit too much so here we've got some freshly cut grass ink and we're just going to brush on a little bit of ink on there and now you'll see that it stands out and it looks a little bit different than the greenery in the jar we're also going to add that same freshly cut grass ink to that little window die that we cut. And then once we add some ink to these, we can take our scissors and just trim off these little leaves. And I always love doing this because it makes me feel like I'm actually pruning some flowers um, and just kind of making a beautiful flower arrangement, but we're doing it out of paper. So we'll trim a bunch of these and then we're gonna layer these at the jar just to create kind of like a little base for the jar. You don't necessarily have to do this step, but I just thought this was so pretty on Megan's card. It's just gorgeous. Now the other thing that that secret garden window die has is these cute kind of like little tulipy flowers. And so we're gonna layer some of those onto this greenery out of some guava cardstock. And I just love that pop of bright pink. Then that pink was so pretty at the bottom, we thought it would be fun to add some more pink up into the sky. So we're gonna take out one of my favorite dies, which is the Hearts and Stars Skinny Tag because it has all different sizes of hearts. It's almost like a little confetti of hearts that you can add to your card the same way you would add sequins or like little drops of glitter. So we cut out a bunch of these hearts in that same guava cardstock and we're gonna layer these all around the scene and you can just see how cute that is looking. Next up, we're gonna take a standard size card base that's five and a half by four and a quarter. We'll add some tape runner to that, and then we can layer the whole card design on top. Now at this point, it kind of felt like those little hearts and flowers were missing something. And so we decided to bring out the white gel pen that we had used for those cute little details on the flower centers. And we're gonna add some white gel pen details to this pink. And you can see that the second these white gel pen details come onto the flowers and the hearts, they just come to life. They almost feel three dimensional. And I think the white of the gel pen looks really nice with the white of the sentiment and of the daffodils. It's just so pretty and so sweet. And then of course, course, I mean, now we've got the white gel pen out. We're just going to add it to everything. So now we're going to add it to some of the greenery as well. And it just makes it look so pretty and dimensional. And it's just really fun to do too. And now this card is all done. It is so super cute. I am so in love with it. So much fun to make. I love the daffodils in the jar. And next up, Shari is going to create the cutest daffodil card and she's going to be using some inking on her petals. So take it away, Shari. So for my darling daffodils card today, I've cut my petals from some yellow stripes and sprinkles paper. I've cut my stems and my leaves from some cilantro and then that center is cut from some apricot. And I'm going to do some ink blending on all of these die cut pieces. So for the petals, I'm starting out with some sunflower ink and I'm just inking from the center out towards the side. And I'm being very delicate with these because they are just held together with that little center circle. So you don't wanna be too aggressive, but it works really well with that brush. So I'm adding some ink and then those tips, I'm going to leave the color of the cardstock. And this is going to cover up the dots quite a bit so that texture is gonna be very, very subtle in the background. And once I have these two done, I'm just going to add a little dot of glue to that center piece and layer the two together 
alternating the petals so that they are between each other. Now I'll just set that aside. And then for my other petals, these are the individual ones, I am going to do the same thing. So I'm inking the side that is going to be attached to the stem and I'm inking that with that yellow. So you go dark yellow out to the lighter yellow of the paper. And those all look like they match. So I'll just set those aside and move on to my leaves and my stems. For this, I'm using some clover ink. And again, I'm just pulling that ink up from the bottom. So the darker color will be at the bottom of the leaves and the stems. And then the lighter cilantro color of the cardstock will be at the top. And I, I did get a little aggressive and bend my stem there, but not too bad, and you don't even see it. So once I have those all inked up, I'll set those aside, clean off my mat, and then for the center of the flower, I'm adding some carrot ink to this apricot die cut piece. That's the big piece of the middle. And then for the little pieces that I'm going to stack on top, I'm going to make basically my own colored cardstock. So this is that same carrot ink. This is what I'm going to cut the middle size pieces out of. And then I'm pulling in some fake tan, which is a bit darker. I'm just going to add some of that right to this corner here. And that's going to be the little round center piece. So I'll die cut those out of this inked piece of cardstock. And now I can assemble the center. So I'm putting those two lighter orange, we should say, on top of each other and again, alternating it so the little pieces that stick out go between each other. And then I'm adding one of those dots to the middle. Once I had it assembled, I felt like the colors were a little too close. So I took my Copic marker, darkened up the center and then added little dots of color to those little pieces that stick out of that middle piece. And now I can add this whole thing to the center of my daffodil. Then I can put it on a stem. That little circle lines up with the circle on the stem and that flower is complete. Now for the second one, it is a little bud. So I'm going to take this little piece that comes in the die set and create a little daffodil that has not quite bloomed using three of those individual petals. So I'm going to put one on the left and then one on the right. And then the third one will be behind these two peeking up in the middle. I just think that is really cute to make this little daffodil that's not quite popped his head open yet. And then of course I'll add this to the other stem. These stems curve in opposite directions which makes it perfect to make a little bouquet of daffodils. Now for my card, I'm using this diagonal gingham from the Gotta Have Gingham rainbow set. And then I'm going to take the window opening from the secret garden window die and create a window in this gingham for my daffodils to pop out of. So I'll just line that up. The outside die is the largest of the outside end stitch rectangles. So I'll get that nice stitching detail and I can just run these through the die cut machine at the same time. Now you can see how I can tuck the ends of the stems of the daffodils behind the window and they look like they're growing out of the opening. So I'm going to go ahead and put all these flowers and leaves assembled like I want them in the opening before I put this onto the card base. And I'm using liquid glue so you can see I'm shifting it around a little bit. I want to make sure both of the blossoms overlap the edge of the opening. I really think that helps give it the look like it's popping out at you. And then everything that overlaps the edge, I will tack down to the outside edge of that frame. 
And then the part that's sticking out of the bottom, I'll just trim off. You can see I also added a piece of washi tape to hold those bottoms in place. You won't ever see that and it will help hold those in place and they won't move around. And now I'm adding some foam all over. That foam would have also held that in place, but the washi held it for the time being. I'm adding foam to the back of the flowers, to all sides of the frame, and then I have those really thin foam strips that actually fit perfectly on the stems so that those can be popped up and supported as well, just like the frame that they're attached to. And you don't need to do the whole stem, just a few pieces works perfectly fine. So I'm pulling off all those liner pieces for all those pieces of foam. And then I have a card base cut from some ballet slipper cardstock. So we're going to see that pretty light pink color through the window as well as a little mat around our frame. And I did decide to add one more of the little leaves. This one I'm going to glue directly to the background so it's not popped up. And then it can just tuck right behind that frame. It gives it a little bit of dimension to be back against that background. Now for the sentiment, I've pulled out a sentiment from the Offset Sayings Everyday stamp set that says, So happy for you. This is the solid version, so I'm going to stamp this in some sunflower ink to match my flowers. And then I'll take the outline version of this and line it up right on top. And I cut out the part where you saw my head trying to line it up. Once it's lined up, I picked it up with the door of the misty, and now I can stamp it in black. And I'll get a perfectly outlined sentiment. You could also stamp the black first and then the color, whichever works best for you. Now I'm using a sentiment banner to cut this out. It fits in here perfectly. And then I'm going to glue this to that frame overlapping the bottom. And then to add a little bit of texture, I have some jute twine here. I'm going to wrap it around my card a few times and then tie a little bow. I thought this was a fun detail to add, kind of like you bought a bouquet of flowers that was tied up with some natural twine like this. I think that really adds some fun to this card. So I'm just tying a little bow, get the loops where I want them in the length, and then I can just cut off the excess of the tails. And I think this just adds a little bit of interest without distracting too much. Now I'm adding some glitter to the center of the flower and tiny little dots around that centerpiece. I'm going to add some lines of glitter to the leaves so that it catches your eye. And then I thought this was looking pretty good just as it was, but then I wanted to add a little bit more pop of color. So I found some already die cut hearts from Guava Cardstock. And I'm just going to add a little sprinkling of die cut hearts. So I'm adding that big one up in the corner where it was kind of empty. A couple small ones in the pink. And then I actually found some even smaller ones that I'm going to add here in just a second. And of course, I'm adding some glitter to all those little hearts. So here's those little tiny ones. And I think those little tiny ones were the perfect addition to just kind of finish this off. And they look like they've just been sprinkled around the card. And of course, add some glitter to those so they match the others. And then here is my finished card with those darling daffodils. And I just love how it turned out. I love that gingham with those daffodils. It makes me think of spring. This card is so pretty, Shari, and I love all that sparkle and that pretty gingham too. And next up, we're going to be creating a card using the daffodils in a little bit of a different way. And we're going to be using the new embroidery hoop die, but we're going to be stamping inside of it instead of embroidering in it. And in just a couple days, we're going to be doing an intro to the embroidery hoop with lots of stitching that's going to be super cool. Now, one of the awesome things about the embroidery hoop die is that it perfectly fits our different magic messages stamp sets. So this is from the original magic messages set and it says, you make me smile. And so we're going to stamp that out in some fish tank ink. And this is some blue from our textured cardstock packs. 
Then we're going to cut this with a two and a half inch circle, which is the perfect size circle to put behind the embroidery hoop. So we're just going to center that and then run that through the die cut machine. And now you'll see that it's going to layer behind that embroidery hoop in such a pretty way. And I love that kind of monochromatic blue look. So we'll add some tape runner to the back of the hoop and then we'll layer that right onto that circle. And now it looks like one of those embroidery hoops that maybe has a stitch saying inside. I think it's just so cute. So next up, we're gonna start working on some of those daffodil pieces. And so these are some textured cardstock. We also have a shimmer cardstock. Really like the color for this, but didn't want any shimmer on this card. So we're just gonna die cut from the back. We're gonna be using the individual petals and then all of the flower centerpieces of the Darling Daffodils, but this is how we're gonna get a different look is we're not gonna bring in the petals in the same way that we did towards the beginning of the video. And there you can see how pretty those are die cut out of different shades of pink and red. It's just gorgeous. And so we're gonna layer some of these flower centers together and you can see what cute little flowers these make without even adding them to the daffodils. So I love that there's multiple ways to use this. I also really like the look of those kind of overlapping star pieces, for lack of a better phrase, in the center there with the two different shades of pink and red. I think it's just so beautiful. And then we're going to add that tiny little yellow flower center there. And I love how it has those little pierced dots in it. It just makes it feel so special. Then next we're gonna create something that kind of looks like a tulip, sort of. So we're gonna use those little star-shaped flower centers and we're gonna add the smaller center that has the little pierced dots to those. And then what we're going to be doing is we're gonna be tucking those in to those alternate flower centers, the one that helped us make the daffodil that's kind of looking off to the side. We're gonna use those kind of like a tulip. And one thing I love about that is that it has a little cut line in it. So you can actually tuck things inside. So we're just gonna take this little flower here and we're gonna make it so so half the flower is tucked into that slot and the rest of the half is peeking out and it makes it look like you have this like beautiful little flower with some of its details peeking out. And I think it's just so sweet and so pretty. And so we're gonna do that on the second tulip as well. And I keep calling them tulips. They don't really look like tulips, but that's what I'm calling them because I just think they're so pretty. All right, so now I've got all of these pieces cut and we're gonna add those same little white gel pen details. And you'll see as we add those little dots to the ends of those little star center pieces, there's something about it this makes it feel so special and then we'll add some other little dots and things to the leaves and the petals just so cute so sweet it just adds just a fun little detail to it and then next we're going to take out for the embroidery hoop it has the little pin at the top we're going to cut that out of some silver metallic cardstock and we'll be able to layer that at the top of the embroidery hoop that we worked on earlier so we'll add that little pin at the top and then what we're going to do is we're going to layer the flowers at the bottom of the embroidery hoop. And this is going to create a little floral frame that is just gorgeous. You can imagine that this would be really pretty on like a stitched oval with a sentiment on the inside, any kind of circle. It just looks gorgeous. I love it. I love these colors together. And then we're going to add a little bit more tape runner and we're going to layer the leaves on the outside. And I think that just frames it perfectly. Next, we're gonna be working on the background for this image, and we're gonna be using the Itsy Bitsy Polka Dot Backdrop Die, which is so super cute, and we're gonna die cut that from another piece of that same textured cardstock pack because all of those blues look so pretty together. Then what we're gonna do is we're going to die cut this with the largest of the small stitch rectangles so that it has a pretty stitch detail and it's also a little bit smaller so that we can have a border around it for our card base. And today we were inspired by two people to make this card. We were inspired by Elena's color palette on her card that we'll show you at the end. And also a card by Grace that used these beautiful little flowers as a little frame. So I love the idea that we were inspired by two different design team members to create this card. We die cut the largest stitch rectangle out of some white cardstock and we're gonna layer that polka dot backdrop on there. And the white cardstock fills in those little dots for the cutest little polka dot special background. And then we're gonna add some foam squares to the back of this embroidery hoop and we're gonna layer that onto the card. And this is a really simple card, but I think it's just so cute. It really allows those flowers to shine and the color palette's so fun. And here we have a standard size card base. It's five and a half by four and a quarter. We'll add some tape runner to that and then we can layer the card base on top. And now the card is all done. And this card makes me smile. I just love those little flowers. I'm gonna be using them so much as daffodils and on their own too. I think this is just way too cute. Next up, we have some incredible cards by the design team. 
And first up, we have this beautiful card by Callie. I love how she added some pink details to her daffodils and she used the brand new rainbow washi tape as a really cool background. Elise die cut the new stripes and sprinkles and wet sewing on papers to create her daffodils and I love the look of the texture of the pattern paper and those beautiful flowers. And then here I love how Elise added the cute little elephant and the bow to the daffodils. It's just so sweet. Letitia's color palette is just so pretty and I love that she cut the petals out of some floral cardstock. And here is this beautiful card by Crace that inspired us to make ours. She hand stitched the most beautiful background for those flowers. And then here is the card by Elena that inspired us with the color palette. And I love how she used all of those flower centers and she added them to that cute die cut umbrella. This card is so sweet and creative. This is Megan's super sweet jar card that inspired us to make ours. I love how she added color with her markers to the daffodils. It's so pretty. And then this card is a fun combination of Extraordinary Easter and the daffodils. They are so perfect together. So we cannot wait to see what you create with these super cute darling daffodils. So make sure to share it with us. Thank you so much for watching today and I hope you have an absolutely amazing day. Bye.